Hi, I'm Brenda McLeone and welcome to an all new episode of Snow Motion. This week we ride up the chairlift and hit the bumps with World Cup winning mogul skier Kai Owens. The 16 year old Gainong shows me some pointers in the moguls and then I'll share a few more ski and fitness tips of my own. And finally, we'll check out the latest film from Matchstick Productions, The Stomping Grounds. Winter is here, so let's get started. Life in the Roaring Fork Valley is anything but ordinary. We're a community of athletes, artists, and adventurers. And now we're home to the groundbreaking research and world-class patient care of the Stedman Clinic and Stedman Philippon Research Institute. Aspen's destination for personalized orthopedic care. Evidence-based medicine to help you heal faster. The Stedman Clinic and Stedman Philippon Research Institute. The future of orthopedic medicine is here. Corbell, make it gold. Snow Motion is brought to you by the Stedman Clinic, treating Team USA and the athlete in all of us. And by Gorsuch. Success in competitive moguls takes speed, form, and impressive jumps. US ski team member Kai Owens excels at all three but it's her air sense in particular that's making waves on the World Cup circuit and launching her to the top of the podium. Today's Snow Motion chairlift interview is with Kai Owens, the youngest freestyle skier on the U.S. ski team at age 16. This girl has won a World Cup already. Kai, tell us about your career and how you got so good at this young age. Well, my career is just beginning, which is the exciting part. Um, so I've been training a lot. I've been mogul skiing competitively since I was six years old. So we've just been working hard and having fun. Gosh, you must love it. But it looks so intimidating when we're watching a competition. And explain that to us, what, you, what the disciplines are, uh, the elements of you being so good. Well, there's two events in moguls, single moguls and dual moguls. Um, I personally think I'm equally as good as at both. Um, each aspect that you're judged on in both events is speed, air, like your jumps, jump execution, and skiing. And so for me, my strength is a jumper um, because I've been doing it so long. And skiing is more about kind of your form and how clean and good and aggressive you are. And then speed is obviously, you're just trying to be as fast as you can. And do everything right. Yes. <laughs> Land your jumps, have a good takeoff, be perfect in the moguls, keep your legs together, right? Yeah, it's a, lot, it's a lot to think about, yeah. but um, I try and narrow it down to like three big things that I'm working on in a competition run. What do you call some of your air moves? Uh, well, the jump I'm kind of known for right now, and definitely my favorite one is a cork, called a cork seven. So it's an off axis 720. How you get into that axis, if you can picture it, it's like kicking a soccer ball with your whole body. So it's like getting up kind of in that position. When you won your first World Cup and you were in the finals, what was going through your head? Well, I was, I was pretty tired, so I was just trying to keep my energy up and preserve, preserve as much as I can. Um, I was trying to stay really relaxed and focused on my cues, which is what I work on with my sports psych and my coaches. So kind of just the specific aspects that I do during a mogul skiing run, like keeping my feet together or making sure I'm forward on my takeoffs, little things like that. Yeah. So you're focusing on what you're doing, not how you're doing. 
it's hard, it's really hard to not focus on how you're doing. Of course, I knew like I was doing the best I had ever done at, in a, at a World Cup event, um, but I, I still wanted more and it's not over till it's over, so. Okay, we can get any advice we need for our life from Kai. Um, I, I think sports psychology is so interesting. Tell me what you work on with your sports site. I've been working with my sports site. She actually used to be part of Skin Summer for Vail and was a sports site for the school, Vail Skin Summer Academy. Uh -huh. So I've been working with her since I was in sixth grade. So I've been working with her on tons of different things throughout my career. And I think right now my main one is kind of being able to be okay with not being in control, kind of, because there's so much, so many variables and the travel schedule is crazy. So kind of just really enjoying it and being able to be present and just ski. Oh, that's so good. With so much on your plate, I mean, at, at this age and being, are you an 11th grader or 10th? Yeah, I'm a 11th, junior. junior. And uh, you know, it's a big year and doing well in school and right. competing and traveling in the world, over, all over the world. Yeah, so. That's it's pretty cool. certainly crazy. Explain quickly, um, if I was a viewer watching this on TV, how does it work? Basically, there's three rounds in a single competition. So there's a qualification, a finals, and a super finals. The qualification, all, all skiers go. And then the top 16 make the finals. And the top, then everybody skis a final, or the 16 people ski the final. And then there's six girls and that's your podium run. So uh, those six girls are all fighting for that podium. Yep. Okay. All right, well, we're gonna go see how Kai does it right now. Coming up, I get some one-on-one -on -one tips from Kai and the moguls. And later, professional skiers go big in their own backyard in the new film from Matchstick Productions, The Stomping Grounds. Don't go anywhere. What we've done at Surefoot is really changed the way that you get ski boots. The sun shines bright. This boot is made for your foot. As the difference is amazing. You'll ski the better. They're better fitting, better skiing than anything you've ever experienced. I woke up feeling great. Today was made for me. and chairlift interviews. Subscribe to Snow Motion on YouTube and follow me on Instagram at Brenda Buglione One and on Facebook at Snow Motion TV. What a treat to have Kai Owens on Snow Motion. Since we have her, we need to ask her how she is so good in the moguls and what she can teach us to get better. You know, moguls in a mogul course is much different than natural bumps like we have here that you'll find on a normal mountain. So I think getting good at moguls takes a lot of practice and kind of just taking it kind of one step at a time. And I think the first step is finding a nice line. For people that don't know what a good line is, it's like finding a good little bit of consecutive bumps in a row. Um, you can also go across the hill if you're not comfortable with going straight down, but kind of learning how to absorb and like find the rhythm of how to move over those bumps. 
Pull plant timing is really important. Trying to be put your plant on the back side of the mogul so you're not like kind of gripping it. So you want to be really light and kind of use them for balance. Okay, how many people have seen the moguls and you start going too fast and you get kicked back? I mean, that happens a lot. So tell us how to not do that. I think the most important thing is to kind of stay in the front of your skis and absorb, when you absorb moguls, it actually slows you down and you get more speed control. You'd be surprised. Um, pushing across the hill can also slow you down, but you're in a bad position, so it kind of hurts or you're prone to crash. So, so just really where? absorbing fully really helps to slow down. Okay, so absorbing on the top and then pressing, extending your legs yeah, in the trunk. Yeah, it's kind of like a bicycle. <laughs> okay, ooh. Right. Similar to that. Okay, Kai, let's just review, because that was a lot of information. Tell us the three most important tips to be better in the moguls. So number one is be forward and be confident. And then number two is to be pretty relaxed and like free when you do ski those moguls. So that is going over the absorption we talked about. And number three would probably be to keep your eyes up and just Go for it. Looking for the line. Yeah, looking, for, looking line. for that tight line. Okay, let's go do it. She has to show us. <laughs> that was super good. I liked how forward you were and just how smooth you made everything look. Kai, thanks for the mogul tips. Of course. That was really Thank fun. Thanks so much for having me. She's a good visual. <laughs> you know I'm always looking at ways to promote my passion for skiing. In the 90s, the ski company Vocal had a marketing idea to promote their product and get people excited about skiing. They brought together a group of amazing women skiers and called them the Carver Girls. Let's take a trip down memory lane from the snow motion vault. <laughs> the Carver Girls. You know, snow motion is my life, but on the side, I moonlight as a Carver Girl, and here we are. I'm Christy, Katie, Brenda, <laughs> Megan, Ava, Andy. <laughs> we are the Carver Girls. I'm the team captain for the Carver Girls, I brought these women together to really enhance and grow the spirit of skiing. We, this is a great opportunity not only for us women to get together, but get outdoors and enjoy the skiing and share it with everybody on the hill. Let me do that again. <laughs> ah! I just love the feeling of going fast. That's really what it comes down to, skiing. Just being able to stand on skis comfortably and going 40 miles an hour is just an unbelievable feeling. That's what it's all about for me. I'm a Carver Girl because I have a passion for skiing and it's a really great way to get people aware of the industry's products. <laughs> Go Carver Girls! I grew up in Aspen, Colorado and I teach skiing here. I also train ski instructors and I'm out there every day on the slopes whether I'm in this bright orange suit or in my ski school uniform. What do I have to do to ski with those Carver girls? Skiing for me is a, a lifestyle, a way to be outdoors, a way to get exercise, a way, to share, a way to share experiences with your family and your friends. And this way we can go out and have an impact and get people out there and allow them to have a chance to experience all the wonders that we get to. I'm a Carver Girl, mostly because Christy Brown and Annie Bither I got excited about the idea and my sister, my twin sister and I thought it'd be a great way to get out and share the excitement of skiing with people. We all have 
high energy as individuals, but when you put us together, dynamite. What's great about the Carver Girls is that we're taking our collective experience and sharing our love of the sport with you. Remember, skiing is all about having fun. And is there anything better than skiing with your friends? Keep carving, keep it fun, we'll see you on the slopes. This tip is all about Pilates. We're gonna learn how Pilates will help strengthen our bodies and improve our ski technique. We're lucky enough to have Kirsten from Pilates by Kirsten. Kirsten, I know you were a ski racer growing up, but you didn't do Pilates then. What got you into it? So about six years ago, I had a hip surgery on my labrum. I had a labral tear. And after the surgery, I started doing Pilates as part of my recovery. And I've noticed that in the last five years, I'm so much stronger today than I was back then, or even when I was a lot younger ski racing, because I have much more core strength and I have more stability when I'm on the hill. So that's why I got into this. Kirsten, show us an exercise that has helped you be stronger on the slopes. Okay, so one of my favorite exercises is a classical Pilates move. It's called the roll up. So we're gonna lay all the way down on our mats and lay all the way down on your back. And we're just gonna start with our legs straight. You can have your legs together, feet flexed, and arms up to the ceiling. So we're gonna start by inhaling, lifting the head and shoulders up off the mat. Inhale. Yep. Already engaging your core here and then slowly rolling up. How come I, you were slower and I was faster because <laughs> I'm using momentum? Yeah. Okay. Pulling the ribs and abs back. Reach the fingertips forward. Good. You're getting a nice stretch in your back. Keep pulling the abs in. You're actively engaging the core even in the stretch. And then we're going to inhale, roll down slowly. One bone at a time to curl your tailbone under and slowly roll all the way down. Yeah, so the less momentum, the better, but that's going to get better over time. So inhale, lift your head and shoulders, and try not to use momentum as you roll up slow. Good, that was better. It was better. Round forward, pull your ribs and arms back. Feel that stretch in your spine as you are working your core. So this is going to help you connect your core to your hip flexors, to your quads, so you're not just using your quads, you're actually using your core to keep you upright and help you return and help you stabilize. So how many times should we do it? So I usually do this one five to 10 times once a day because I usually do a full Pilates workout. If you're only doing a couple exercises, then I would do three sets of 10 along with some other exercises. Okay, let's do it. We're athletes. And athletic trainers. We know how important staying active is to you. We're physicians and scientists. Our groundbreaking research is helping you heal faster. We're the Stedman Clinic and Stedman Philippon Research Institute. And we are your destination for personalized orthopedic care. Personalized orthopedic care. Treating Team USA. And the athlete in all of us. If we want to protect the places we love, we must vote. America is a nation of many nations, many histories, many experiences. But despite our different paths, we all converged here. You see, our common ground is the land itself, our playgrounds and places we love. Now we must protect them from the effects of climate change. If you love the land, make a plan to vote this November. Start your plan at makeadamplan.org. Spiders, big spiders, big, big spiders. Sharks, by far, nothing else is even in the same realm. Butterflies. I, I just see one coming at me and I like, want to run, it's just it's so scary. Probably lack of snowfall is my biggest fear. Because without snow, I, I don't know what I would do, yeah.
Snow Motion is brought to you by Surefoot. Better fitting, better skiing. And by Vocal, high tech made where we live and ski. Welcome back to Snow Motion. For strong skiing, you need a strong core. Here's an anti-rotation exercise that will help keep your upper body stable when you are powering those turns. I'm with Chris Neural, athletic trainer and strength and conditioning specialist. Chris, I want you to give me an exercise that will strengthen our core because when we're skiing, we have to combat a lot of forces with our upper body stability. Okay, so we're gonna do what's called a pal off press. So Brenda, I'm gonna go ahead and have you take a hold of this. Right? You're going to take a couple steps up towards me. Not too many, all right? We're going to get down into a slight squat here. So there's a little bit of tension on that band. Hands are straight in front of your chest here. There we go. And then we're going to just press straight out and then bring it right back. So what we're focusing on here is anti-rotation. So that band wants to pull her to the right as she presses out and we're resisting that force. Good, focus on your breathing. You're going to give me eight to 10 of these. And so as much as that band wants to pull her to the right, especially as she gets further out, she's engaging her core to prevent that rotation. Chris, this can really help our ski technique. When I'm making a turn and I'm angulating into the hill with power on my downhill ski, ankle, knee, hip into the hill, I want to keep my upper body facing down the hill. If I'm not strong in my core, I would have a tendency to lean into the hill and rotate and that releases pressure on my downhill ski. So I need that strong core to combat the forces and keep the pressure on my downhill ski. It's a good one. It's one of my favorites. Some of the biggest names in professional skiing show off what they do best in the places that made them in the stomping grounds from Matchstick Productions. Visit matchstickpro.com for more. At the old stomping grounds, she looks pretty good today. We're in our backyard. I live like two hours away, but it's still like endless. I, I've never skied the runs we're going up to today. It feels really good to be able to come out here. It's good to be with friends and it feels like family. And it's, it's relieving to be out, just out. I'm not here to make money, I'm here to to live in this wonderful part of the country and, and be part of this community. For you, this feels like home. Oh, definitely, yeah. Oh, okay, that was so fun. The caliber of riders that are out here, it's uh, hugely inspirational towards what I'm doing. I'm really stoked to be out here doing this. I was shaking up there. My hand was like...
that's all for this episode of Snow Motion. Thanks for joining us and be sure to tune in all winter long for the latest winter sports action. Until then, I'm Brenda Buglione and we'll see you on the slopes.